the Lumix GH7 is here. ProRes RAW internal recording, phase detect autofocus with new subject detection, world's first internal 32-bit float audio recording when paired with a new XLR2 interface, and a lot more. In this video, I'll highlight the differences between the GH7 and its predecessor, the GH6. Some of these features made their first appearances in either the G9 Mark II, S5 II, or S5 IIx, or even the new S9, while some capabilities are completely new to the GH7. First up is ProRes RAW internal recording, unique to the GH7. With the recording file format set to Apple ProRes, you can choose between 16x9 Full HD, 17x9 Cinema 4K, and 17x9 5.7K. Frame rates from 23.98 to 59.94, along with 25 and 50p and True Cinema 24p. Bit rates range from 121 megabits per second to a whopping 4.2 gigabits per second, by which point you are, of course, in RAW. Your codec choices are ProRes 422 or 422HQ, and ProRes RAW and ProRes RAW HQ. Filtering by ProRes RAW HQ, we can see that our top format is 5728 by 3024 pixels in a 17 by 9 aspect ratio, generating that 4.2 gigabit per second data rate. ProRes RAW recording, like all other formats in the GH7, has no time recording limits. The camera does have the ability to stop recording if temperatures exceed safe specifications, but I tested it and recorded over 40 minutes of 5.7K ProRes RAW HQ before the card filled up and the camera was barely warm to the touch. Next up is the 25.2 megapixel BSI, or Backside Illuminated, Phase Hybrid CMOS sensor. Backside illumination means that each pixel on the sensor is larger, basically less space between the photo sites, and those larger pixels translate to better low light performance. Dynamic range boost, first seen on the GH6, but only on ISO 2000 and above, is now present on the full ISO range of the GH7, which starts at a new base ISO of 500 in VLOG. This is the first PDAF sensor in a GH body, and it brings with it human, animal, car, and motorcycle subject detection, along with new train and airplane detection. You can even specify first car or main part priority for trains, and airframe or nose priority for airplanes. It also adds entire subject or helmet priority for motorcycles, and entire subject or main part priority for cars. Along with the launch of the GH7 is an update to the XLR1, the hot shoe mounted interface that added XLR inputs to the camera. The new XLR2 adds a built-in microphone holder, includes dual XLR inputs, and adds a dedicated 3.5mm input, all with 32-bit float recording in camera. For the first time, you can now capture 32-bit float audio from XLR and 3.5mm microphones into the camera without having to use an external recorder and without having to sync audio in post. The GH7 can record four channels of audio simultaneously with the new XLR2 adapter, and all four inputs can be recorded as 32-bit float. Notice how while recording in 32-bit, the audio level meters don't peak, they just fill up with green. Then in post, while the audio may start off completely oversaturated, it can be brought right back into range. The new implementation of real-time LUT that we first saw on the brand new Lumix S9 is also on the GH7. Now the GH7 doesn't have a dedicated button labeled LUT like the S9 does, but you can program any one of its 22 hardware buttons or five software buttons to trigger the real-time LUT menu. This also means that the new Lumix Lab app is compatible with the GH7, allowing you to create custom LUTs in the app and transfer them directly to your GH7, and also easily copy photos and video from the GH7 to your phone. For videos to be able to be copied to your phone, you'll need to shoot in the MP4 mode. There are several other features in the GH7 that weren't in the GH6, but that we've seen introduced in other newer cameras and are now in the GH7 as well. Two of those are proxy recording and integration with Adobe's Frame.io. This means you can simultaneously shoot, internally, up to Cinema 4K ProRes RAW HQ 
and 720p or 1080p proxy recordings, which can then be automatically transferred to Frame.io via USB or Wi-Fi tethering. That way, a remote editor can start cutting while you're still shooting, then swap out the proxy files with the camera originals as soon as you can provide them. This also works with photos. You could be on location taking pictures, having each RAW or JPEG immediately uploaded to Frame.io for an editor to access. The G87 also includes wired and wireless RTMP and RTMPS and RTP and RTSP streaming. With RTMP, you can single camera live stream to any platform from anywhere that you have internet, including via your cell phone. And with RTSP, you can stream across a local network and add the camera to a live stream using software like OBS or hardware like an FFN Pearl. The beautiful Leica monochrome profile is included. 8-bit video recording modes are back for anyone who wants less from their video captures. And the EVF has even got a slight upgrade to 0.8x magnification. Then let's not forget some of the top features of the G86 that are of course also in the G87. Raw data output for Atomos and Blackmagic recorders with formats like 4K 120p raw and 5.8K 4.3 aspect ratio full sensor open gate raw, 4K 120 internal recordings and up to 300 FPS in HD, recording to external SSD over USB-C, timecode input via an included PC port adapter, full control of the camera via the Lumix Tether app on Mac or PC over a USB connection or even over your network, built-in waveform monitor and vector scope, anamorphic D-squeeze, best-in-class 7.5 stops image stabilization, including special modes for anamorphic stabilization, 13 plus stops of dynamic range, front-facing record button and tally lights, PD power over USB, an LCD panel that tilts out to avoid the HDMI and USB-C ports, one SD card slot, and one CF Express Type-B slot, which is needed for most of the ProRes RAW recordings, Cine-style file naming, 100 megapixel high-resolution photo mode, 132 thousandths of a second shutter speed, 75 frames per second photos in RAW, plus a pre-burst option that starts taking photos before you press the button. Overall, this is an extremely impressive update to the GH line. I'll continue to do more videos on the GH7, diving deeper into specifics like ProRes RAW internal recording and 32-bit float audio internal recording. Be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those, and I'll see you in the next video.